I'm thinking I'm gonna start using this M6 Mark II as my compact vlogging solution. So I got this little cage for it. And really I just needed it so I could mount this microphone over here on the right so that when I lift up the flip screen, I can still see it. What'd you think? Anyways, I'm feeling great today. I doubled our internet speeds. My upload speeds used to be 10 megabits per second. That was really killing me since I upload so much to YouTube. So I called my internet provider and I was like, I need faster upload speeds. And they said for 20 bucks extra, I could get it up to 20 megabits per second. So all my uploads, double speed. Mm. And here's some footage from this little G7X. What you guys think? Not bad for a super compact setup, huh? By the way, I'm holding poop. So I gotta go throw this away. I basically wanna start doing uh, more scientific tests on all the cameras that I review one of the things that I wanna definitely test out is overheating. So I wanna test out all the cameras at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. How do I do that? I was even thinking like an oven, right? The lowest this can get to is 170 degrees. Not good, that would cook the cameras. This one goes down to 150. Maybe I can get it down lower. I might have to do some tests. Why are you doing this again? I have to test out the overheating on the cameras. So every camera I review, I wanna throw it in a little oven for an hour and let it roll. And I wanna see like, can it roll for an hour in a hundred degree weather? Because it gets a hundred degrees pretty often. You could like wrap it up in my heating blanket. I don't know how hot <laughs> I get. <laughs> no, I need something really controlled. I wanna be able to set it at the same exact temperature with a bunch of different cameras. Like I know a lot of the manufacturing companies, they have like a box that's specifically designed to be at a certain temperature and they just leave their products in there for like a crazy amount of time or humidity. It also tests for that, but I'm not legit enough for that. I need like an oven. Well, that is a heater and this is a pretty small room. I wonder how hot it could make this place. Once I get my thermometer, I'm gonna try that out. Okay, I think I might've found the solution actually. An incubator for hatching eggs. Yeah, I get it for about 178 bucks. So this can go from 36 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's basically five degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. It'd be kind of this like big awkward thing to have, it'll take up a lot of space. All for the sake of testing overheating on cameras. Let's do it. What's up, Sam? We just started writing on this whiteboard to have something physical to look at to try to organize my brain a little bit. It started off with just like a nice little list on the left and it just turned into all this. But it's working, I think, huh? Yeah, we so get it. I realized why this whiteboard has been so much more effective than like a digital document. With a digital document, like a Google Doc, editing's very simple and all that, but you only see it when you think about it. So you think about it and then you have to load it up and then you see it opposed to something physical in your face like this, then you think about it because you see it. Which comes first, do you think about it or do you see it? Does that make sense? I don't know, this is just what I was thinking about last night. It's almost like they should be using this in like classrooms or something. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> this technology is fantastic. But yeah, that's one of the things that we've been kind of struggling with is just like efficiency and really what it comes down to is just the amount of planning that I do is very, very minimal. So what I'm hoping to do with these projects is basically spend less time editing, but more time planning and more time shooting. And I think that'll give us better results with the same amount of time and effort. That's the hope. By the way, have you, are you under 200 pounds yet? Oh, I hope so. Oh! <laughs> did you, you got a good weekend? Did you work out? Yeah, I did. I I actually bought that game that you, that you used. Oh, the boxing game? Yeah. Yeah. I did uh, 45 minutes of that. You're so close. Uh, I do feel stronger. I could actually do push-ups now. I couldn't do push-ups before. Hey, there you go. Can yeah, you do a so pull-up? I can do a pull-up, yeah. Wait, you can do a pull-up but not a push-up? Isn't pull-up a lot harder? Not for me. <laughs> and so. I know it's working because like two months ago, these pants were super tight. I couldn't wear a belt with them. And hey. Now they're kind of like sagging a little bit. By the way, Dylan ran the marathon yesterday. Oh, yeah. How you doing? Okay, still kind of sore in my back also, which is kind of surprising. So funny thing, night before the marathon, you know, it's all quiet over here around 10 o'clock. I'm like, okay, Dylan's being responsible. He's going to sleep early so he could wake up at 3 a.m. for the marathon the next morning. And then at midnight, you come stumbling in drunk, like at midnight or 1 a.m. And I'm like, Dylan, what are you doing awake? You got the marathon in like three hours. You're like, ah, I guess I'm going to sleep for like two, three hours and then I'm going to run the marathon. And he did it. Yeah. You did? <laughs> what's, what's, I know, right? Sounds what's totally wrong with you? Right before I left, took a shot. 
do this thing. You <laughs> took a shot before you ran the marathon? Yeah, I did. So, <laughs> are you serious? Oh, yeah. This guy. Whoa! Now these are microfiber towels and they're actually great because they're pretty gentle on stuff but they pick up a lot of dust. So whenever you get a close up of something, you need to wipe it down. You never wanna do it with a rag or anything or else you're gonna leave all kinds of flakes of cloth behind. But what's crazy is how they vacuum seal this thing so tight. I mean, it feels like, it feels like a brick. Are you printing your face on it? I'm trying to, you can see my nose. What happens if you slice it open? Is it just gonna go? Let's test it out. Does that do anything? Oh, oh, there's air. Oh, I feel it inflating. Huh? Oh, I feel so weird. Oh, look at that, now it's all floppy. That's cool, that's kinda crazy. cool. They have one for packing, it's for clothes, and then you put the, you attach a vacuum hose, and Ooh. it goes Vacuum sealer for clothes. Vacuum stored space saver for bedding, pillows, towels, and blankets. I'm gonna order one. Do I just said I wasn't gonna buy anything else, cause I just bought a C-stand. And another thing. Oh, okay, I know what this is. I ordered this. Ooh, it's got a light. Look at that fancy. So satisfying. Peeling off these, so much fun. Starting to heat up, 29 degrees Celsius. Let's see if it feels nice and warm. Oh yeah, it's feeling warm in there. What cameras do you think I should test inside of here? Oh, let me know in the comments, I'll test them. All right, so it's up to 38 degrees now, so inside should feel like a pretty hot day that's like just over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's incubate this camera, here we go. Oh man, it's raining so hard, can you guys hear it? Let's uh, enter time-lapse mode and see how long this camera survives in there. So you can overheat this camera. One thing I wanna know, I've only seen this camera overheat once in my entire life. I wonder how this would do. Ooh, got a little gift from Jonathan Gilbert. He's one of the guys that went to Thailand with us. What is this? Gene, thanks so much for hosting the Thailand trip with Darar. It was multiple bucket list items for me to meet a YouTuber, videographer like you in person and also travel to a new country for the first time. The Thailand trip was an epic experience and it feels pretty awesome to call you guys friends now. If you guys ever want to come to Branson, here are some Branson Ferris wheel tickets. So Jonathan used to work there. Oh, dude, awesome. Jonathan, thank you. Branson, where is that? We need to use these. So it's in Missouri at the south end, south of Kansas City and St. Louis. Oh, I'm going to Kansas City in May, I think. Okay, it's three hours and 21 minutes from there. I don't know if I'll be able to drive down there on that specific trip, but man, I, I, I definitely, I will use these before I die. <laughs> and this looks like a Starbucks gift card. I'm gonna go use this right now. Oh man, that's a lot of rain. I gotta get from the studio into there. And I feel like just literally within the next 10 feet, I'm gonna get soaked. I kinda wanna bring this camera in with me. All right, let's do this. I guess we got no choice, we gotta do it. <laughs> Ugh. The whole coronavirus situation is getting kind of crazy, huh? They're like yeah. shutting down school, so you might uh, be able to stay home for the next few weeks. That is a very real possibility. And we're supposed to be going to Bali in, what, three weeks? Two yeah. weeks? Three weeks? In the meantime, ah, little clock and thermometer. That way when I do some overheating tests with this new incubator, we can see for sure like the temperature is accurate and all that. We're getting real scientific here. Where are we gonna put that when we move? Oh. Hey, look what else came. The little compression thing. You wanna compress some stuff? <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> You're gonna wanna do that to like everything. Yeah, I am. All right, so we got our pump and a variety pack of sizes. All right, this is the closet we can compress. I bet you we can get all this stuff into like a little small chunk of space. Well, what happens when I need Something. I gotta undecompress the bag and then take it out and then recompress the bag. That seems awfully inconvenient. Well, how often do we use these? Well, some stuff I use like we I change it out when we change our bedding. All the stuff that we don't use that frequently. Okay. We should compress. Okay. Two pillows. Here, okay. Start with these. Okay. Woo! <laughs> it's kind of good that it's contained too, so like dust getting on the blankets and stuff. I don't even think you need a pump. You just go. And then it's just a one-way valve. You think I'm gonna get high if I do that? I bet that got my heart rate up a little bit. It's like the shake weight, you know? Just, you just look ridiculous doing it. Do you see how small this is getting though? Holy crap. I think we need to get a space saver sponsorship here. Link in description. What? Look, look at this. This is 
this is crazy. You don't seem that impressed. I'm yeah, really impressed. No, I, I think that that's... I'd be curious. Like, if you were to leave this in here for like a month and we open back up, will it poof back up? I want to compress everything. This one's massive though. Like, I feel like you could maybe fit a human in here. You think like the mafia has a bunch of these for their dead bodies? And they just try to compress it down. You could actually get most of the air out initially just by laying on it. This one way valve seems to work pretty well. So it's been in here for what, like 10 minutes or something? Let's see how it re-expands. Softness level, still pretty good. So 10 minutes, okay. Let's see about a few months. <laughs> oh yeah, this one's a large. I could put two pillows into one bag. Ultimate compression. It doesn't really take too much to amuse me. <laughs> this is two pillows. What? So this was two whole shelves in the closet. We might have gotten a little carried away here. I don't think this is gonna zip. Some of this stuff is pretty firm already, so I don't know how much like suction is left on it. All right, I think we got the seal. Look at this thing. Oh my God, so this is two whole shelves, but literally just putting it in this bag alone even without sealing it, it, it still compressed it quite a bit, huh? Like when it's fluffed out, it's like boo, 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 boo. Okay, so here's the before. Oh yeah. This is what happens when I don't have anything interesting going on in the day. Oh my God. Look at that. And what's crazy is how it feels. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like heavy, huh? All those blankets and two pillows. Are you excited? I am. <laughs> I think these are gonna be awesome for travel, like compressing all your clothes to put into your bag. You could bring this pump along with you, but even without it, you can kind of get most of the air out by just like sitting on it. Like check it out, this is like eight shirts, but then you just kind of lean onto it and the air comes out like this. So you become the vacuum. <laughs> I feel like an infomercial, like one of those late night infomercials. You won't believe what this vacuum seal bag does. And it's so easy. Peter, can't you see I'm trying to film my infomercial? This is very important business. Stop trying to eat me. <laughs> I mean, it's compressed, but it's still kind of floppy. It's not as satisfying. I, mean, I guess you still do want to use this to get it extra, extra tight. Yeah! Oh yeah. It finally happened. It happened? It happened. Oh, under 200 pounds. Ah! <laughs> so we're gonna go get kicking Cajun later. Hell yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. Get that, I'm gonna gain that pound back. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, are these vac seal bags really cool, Sam? Oh, you know, you could just do this with like any bag, right? You just attach like the, the nozzle from a vacuum. You could just do it with like a trash bag? Yeah, I saw a life hack on YouTube and you could just do it with any bag. Full bag, two blankets. Whoa. <laughs> Since there's so much suction, does that just contain? Oh, well, it'll start. No, no, you have, to, you have to make a knot. You just tie it up? Yeah. So I didn't have to buy all those vacuum seals? <laughs> now I want to do a few upgrades to my workstation here. First, I put this light here, which is nice so that I can easily just sit here and do some filming. The thing I hate about filming here is the sound quality. It's so bouncy and echoey. It always just sounds so much better when I use a microphone like this Shure SM7B. But the thing is, it's always kind of in the way. So I got a little table mount for it. And I just kind of want to permanently leave it here. I just need to figure out where I can place it. I don't know, there's a lot going on here. The light's here. The mic stand's gonna be here. This is a nice arm. Maddie told me that he uses the blue arm and they're like about a hundred bucks each. And it's kind of expensive for a mic stand, but this is definitely much better than the other crap I've been using in the past. The camera generally lands right around here. Now what I wanna do is find a good spot for this microphone where it's not gonna get in the way of the the light and all, or do I do it like I used to and have it coming from above like this? That way it's not really in the way. What do you guys think, something like this? Or do I just leave it out of frame? I mean, it's right there and that would pick it up pretty well here and here, so this might be the solution. Maybe it just needs to stay out of frame. All right, so I guess that's what we're doing. And what's kind of nice about the stand is that it has a little pocket for the XLR cable so I can just feed that through, make that cable completely out the way. It's the little things, it's the nice touches. Oh yeah, there we go. That's slick, like that. So now it's all set up, so let's switch the audio to this 
And here's how the sound quality sounds when I switch this microphone. A little less echo, right? Hopefully. I try to make it as easy as possible for me to film. So whenever I want to get a shot in the studio, I don't want to worry about setting it up, plugging in the lights and adjusting everything and then checking the frame. Like I want to have it so I have a few different spots that I film in and I could just go there, flip a switch and everything turns on and it's ready to go. So this should help with that. But ooh, I got another thing that's even more exciting. Check this out. ViewSonic VP3881. They sent this to me. They also sent me a second one. <laughs> I didn't realize how big 38 inches is. Oh yeah. Check that out. ViewSonic sent this out to me and they want me to test it out for a little bit and if I like it they want to sponsor a video so Guess I'll start hooking it up. Technically, these ultra wide screens have less vertical resolution than the one I have, which is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. But I just like the idea of having this much space. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. What do you guys think of these ultra wides anyways? Either they're cool or are they a little gimmicky? <laughs> this is cool. That is cool. Also, each one comes with a calibration report. And by the way, this isn't a sponsored video yet. I, I still have to test it. I wanna put some editing days behind it before I officially say this is cool or this isn't. So we'll, we'll come back to this. But overall, look at this desk setup right now though. Pretty sweet, huh? All right, so this is day two with this new setup. I'm not completely sold on what's the best microphone to use on the setting. So I need your guys' help to decide. So we have three audio sources. So right now this is audio source number one. And now this is audio source number two. So this is option number two. And then this is option number three. So out of these three, which one sounds better? I'm just gonna keep talking and we're gonna switch between the different microphones for the next minute or so. But hit that poll right there and let me know which microphone I should officially use for this. So source number one, source number two, and source number three. Gene says, I'm gonna play the zombie game. Yay, heads rolling. Okay, I'm gonna play this later. <laughs> yeah. The game's called Arizona Sunshine. And literally the first scene is like a decapitated head rolling towards you. And again, this is in VR, so it's extra creepy. But that game's actually really awesome. I gotta admit, I'm a little bit addicted to it. <laughs> it was all fun and games until Gene started virtual boxing in his boxers. Am I sharing too much? Is that where the line gets crossed? <laughs> when you're too lazy to go to an actual gym, Cough, cough, Gene. <laughs> Man, I hate going to the gym. I literally have a gym membership that I've only used twice. <laughs> and I bought it for a year. So, you know, I'm kind of wasting money there. <laughs> Anyways, what'd you guys think? Do you have a preference on microphone number one, microphone number two, or microphone number three? By the way, microphone number two is the Shure SM7B, which is a great sounding microphone, but it's really designed to be really close to you. And then number three is the trusty Sennheiser 416, which is generally one of my favorite microphones, but I don't know how well it does in echoey situations. Hopefully they sound okay. We'll see. You guys tell me. Don't forget to take that poll. And let's wrap this vlog up. See you guys later.